Hallelujah. Belongs to me. Amen. It's good to be here. Let's pray together. Father, we know that you are kind and you're good. And your mercy never fails us. Uh, we know that you are here for a time of encounter with the lives of the people. Hallelujah. And this morning we pray, oh God, that you dispel every darkness. Dispel every works of the evil one in the name of Jesus, Father. Lord, your people have come because they love you. And because they want to hear you speak to them. Talk to them in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are so thankful to God in the name of Jesus for giving this opportunity. And you know how powerful is online that we could even meet online. Yeah, amen. It's good to be here. Um, I would love to Pastor uh, Bernard and Pastor Blaze. Blaze of fire. Praise God. I want to take from what she shared just a while ago. Uh, Philippians 4 and verse number 7. And I feel that many of us here this morning, many of you, you have come here with a lot of troubles in your heart. Are you like that today? A lot of things are in your mind. A lot of things, you know, that is really disturbing you. And uh, let me read that to you once again. Uh, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. And I pray that today you are not just looking at a speaker. I pray that you are going to look to God. Amen. Look to the God who is the author of the word of God. Amen. Because it is only Him who can give you the deliverance. Amen. And so this morning I want to speak to you and say, don't be so worried about your life. Amen. What we need today is peace. Can you spell to me peace? How do we spell peace? P-E. A-C-E. It is shalom. Peace is not some commodity you go to 7-Eleven. And you know we were just in Sabarang Jaya. And we were looking for water, mineral water. And we had to drive so many places to find a mineral water. But you just can't go over the counter and get some peace. Can you do that? All right. You cannot go to the counter but I want to let you know that peace is not just a commodity. It's a person. Can you say amen to that? Amen? Peace is a person. And how many of you know that person? Can you raise your hands and tell me? If you know that person, Jesus is the peace. I want to pray with you this morning. Can you raise, stand up on your feet? I want to pray with you because I feel a lot of people here this morning and you are in a place of uh, peaceless. 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 Now what is your matter today? What is your matter? Is that the job? Is that the promotion? No, is that your boss? Or is that your family? Or is that your neighbor? Or is that some messages that you're receiving that is bombarding you? What is that need today? I want you to have expectation today. When you lift your hands to heaven, just imagine that you are taking that thing out of your heart. You know, just plug out that worry. Plug it out from your heart and give it to God. Can you do that? Just imagine you taking that burden from your heart today. Take it from your heart and surrender it to the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Can you do that? Father Lord, you see all the hands. You see all the hands. You see all the hands. By the name of Jesus, we are commanding every yoke to be taken out. Every yoke to be bound in Jesus' name. Amen. Every yoke that is heavy to bear, we bind that in Jesus' name. We bind. We bind every kind of worry in Jesus' name. Every sense of hopelessness, we bind you in the name of Jesus. And let the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you give God a clap offering and say, thank you, Lord. Please be seated. Please be seated. How many of you really believe that happened? Is that just a formula? Some preacher will come here and say something and you respond. It's not like a drama. All right? If you think it's a drama, then it's a drama to you. But if you really believe in the reality of what has happened, because everything happens by faith. Amen? Hallelujah. And so I want to just um, 
shift my message to what I believe God is talking to us this morning. Hallelujah. Many of you here this morning are worried about life. Can you agree with what I'm saying is true? I just sense a sense of peacelessness. And so I'm shifting the message to really address this matter. Math, Mark chapter 4 and verse number 19. I'm going to revisit the story, which is a familiar one to each one of us. And before I share that word today, when I was preparing for the message of this morning, I began to see a dim light. A light that was dim. Or rather, it was like, you know, the Indian lamp of Dibawali. You can, can you imagine that lamp? That lamp that is dim. I saw that lamp. This is not good enough. All right. That light was dim. And then that's the condition for many of you today. The light is dim. Hallelujah. Brother, the light is dim. You're wearing some glasses, man. It's, it's dim out there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why is that light dim? Why is that light dim? I want to ask you this question. All right. And do you know in those times, they did not have a beautiful facility like um, Howard's Revival Church. It's a beautiful building. And those times, people were visiting secretly. Even today, in the different parts of China, underground churches, people are meeting secretly. All right? And what do you do when you go into the cave? You need some light. All right? We return home to our weekly affairs. What happens is that our, our flame becomes dimmer because the reality of the real life, isn't that true? And then, well, the doctor goes to the clinic every morning. So many patients with different stories. Am I right? And as a teacher, you go to your school or kindergarten. Same faces, same parents, same problem. How boring is that? The cares of this world, my friends. So Jesus just was so, I would say, so brilliant to just narrow down to four things that's going to take away our, our sense of joy. You know, you come to church, you read the word of God, you sing some songs, you get excited. But when you return to the real life from Monday to Saturday, so these are the four things that I'm going to read that for you. Mark, Mark chapter 4, Mark chapter 4 and verse 19, it says, But the worries of the world, that is the cause, my friend. The cause to all the dimness in your life. The worries of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the desires for other things entering in and choke the word. And it becomes unfruitful. I want to encourage you today. Tell me, what can worry do to you? Is it going to add up like Bitcoin? Adding some interest and onto the capital. Who said no? Brother, that's true. If that was true, that I, we all should worry. Because it's going to give us some investment in our capital. No, it's not like that. Worry is going to deplete even what you have. Yeah? Just like you have a bag of rice. You know, in those days, not like now, you have got that kampit, you know, the guni, the guni sack, right? When you start to worry, it's just like all the ants and insects, termites comes in to destroy what is there. That is what worry does for you. Tell me if you want that to happen to you. No, I don't think so. So friends, these are the four things, the cares of this world. What are the cares of this world? The moment you walk out the door, you got to check the fuel level. Am I right? You are not traveling on free petrol, without petrol. Yesterday I was traveling with my wife and we were just having a nice joy ride, you know. It was so good and we arrived and we stopped for a while and I didn't notice that the tank was just uh, giving way. We just had two bars. Suddenly, that, that light popped up, right? Popped up. And in no time, there was only one bar left. 
Friends, I tell you, that is life. The cares of this world, so many things happen. And do you know in some places you need to have the touch and go in order to deduct from the toll gate? A lot of people don't have enough value on their toll gate, on that uh, credit. So friends, all the cares of this world, what happened to that worship on Sunday? Suddenly you are saying, my goodness, oh, you're banging the table, you're banging the door, or you're banging your wife. Because you are so freaked out and you don't know what to do. So friends, firstly is the cares of this world. See, God has created us well and good and all of you are looking good. Nice Bangsa Malaysia here. A mix of Indians and Chinese and other races too. Praise God. See, friends, God didn't create us to worry. God did not put that equation of worry into our lives. And so we know the story of how you know, there were these four types of ground in this parable. There was this ones that fell onto the wayside, fell onto the thorny, uh, stony ground, fell on t- among the thorns and fell among the good ground. Friends, do you know that sometimes when we allow the cares of this world to eat us up, it's going to choke whatever that we are carrying. Amen? It's going to choke. It's going to choke. But who is giving the permission for that seed to be choked? It's us. It's us. Because we shift our eyes from Jesus and we start looking at the problem. Yeah. We just focus instead of Jesus to the problem. It's called problem-free philosophy. What does it mean? Hakuna Matata. It means to live worry-free. It's not possible in this world. But we have Jesus. Amen? See, the people of the world can't do that. But we have the, the author of peace right inside of us. Hallelujah. So friends, I pray today. Make a decision. Can you do that? What worry is that that you have? As I said to you, it's not going to add to your capital. No point worrying. Hallelujah. Let me now just go on to what I start, wanted to preach uh, this morning. And so I begin to see this vision of this uh, dim light. All right. Let me read to you from Matthew uh, 25 and verse number 8. And this is the story of how there were these wise virgins and there were these foolish virgins. How many of you want to be like the wise virgin? Can I see your hands? We all want to be the wise virgins. All right. What happened was... In verse number 8, Matthew 25, in verse number 8. And the foolish say to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. All right? So this is really what happened. Jesus was explaining that they were all waiting for the bridegroom to come. But the problem is, there was no appointment given. Like when you go to the doctor's clinic, you say, okay, come and meet us at 10 10 a.m. You just be there and you attended too. But in this parable, there was no appointment given. You do not know when the bridegroom was coming. And because of that, there were these five foolish, foolish virgins who really didn't plan. Really didn't plan. And so their, their oil was drying out. It was drying out. And that is why I begin to relate this story to the quantity of oil in your life. Hallelujah. How much of oil do we have in our life? How much of oil do we have in our life? Do you know that we have this fresh oil in our life because we have the Holy Spirit in us? Amen. How many of you do not have the Holy Spirit? Can I see your hands? No one should raise your hands, all right? See, we have the oil of God in our lives. Praise God. We have the oil of God in our lives. And so, our lamp should not go off. Amen? So, another reason for this depletion of hunger is this very thing that, um, that sometimes because of the tiredness of our life. How many of you can tell me that living in this world is tiring? Am I right, Pastor? You know why? Because we go through the motion. Same thing again and again. We get tired. We get tired with life. You see, 
because we get tired with life, we allow the tiredness, the sense of worry to eat us up and that directly affects our hunger for God. How sad is that? For example, if you're a husband or if you're a wife, you get so caught up with your school matters, your work matters, you know, you get so caught up, or even the husband is so caught up, and then you return home and you just, you have a sour face to your partner. Is that fair? Is that fair to the other person? I don't think so. You should work, you should do whatever that it takes at work, but don't bring back work home. Amen? I mean, we all, we all think that working the extra is good. We are trying to impress our bosses. No, it's not like that. Friends, because those things are going to eat you up and you're going to start depleting the hunger for God. Just like you are so tired with work. No, honey, I'm so tired. I'm sorry, I don't have time to talk to you. I don't have time for TV with you tonight. You know why? Because you are so caught up with work, worries of work, the problems of what's going to happen tomorrow, that you are just exhausting that love the attention that you're supposed to give to your partner. Is it fair? Tell me, is it fair? No, it's not fair. But that's how we have been living. You know, the children were running to you. Oh, Papa, Mommy. Oh, you know, I want to play with you. Oh, I'm so tired. Ah, I'm so busy. No, I don't, I don't think it's fair. Like that, we do that to God. Am I right? Because we are so busy, you know why? Because you are self-sustaining. You think that it's your work that's going to bring you food on the table. You think it's because of your strength, you are sustaining your life, but the very breath belongs to God. Am I right? So please get free from this deception. We don't sustain our life. Can you say amen to that? We don't sustain our lives. God does. Amen? Amen? Do you believe in what I say is true? Don't just say amen or don't, don't give a re response which is not birthed from your heart. So because of all this deceitfulness of life, the cares of this world, what happens? Our hunger quotient to be, it becomes reduced. Hunger for God becomes reduced. Because our hunger is reduced, we have no time to worship. Amen? This, this is the reality of life. So I pray that we will start back this hunger process. Even as a lot of us, all of us, we are coming back out of, out of COVID, out of lockdown, and we are back into work, back into business, back to church. Let us develop that hunger to God once again. Psalms chapter 63 and verse number 1. Oh God, you are my God. Can I just get one of you to read that? Psalm 63 and verse number 1. Psalm 63 and verse number 1. O oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Amen. Why do you need the pastor to read the word of God? Please tell me, answer the question. Why didn't you, did you not bring your Bible? I want one of you to read that. I'm angry now. You have caused your pastor to read it, and you don't read it. One of you, please read it. Please be responsible. On the screen now. Okay, one of you stand and read. Now, you see, don't be casual about the Word of God. Why is that attitude? Why is that attitude? Please learn to be responsible. Because I believe when you speak the word of God, it does something to you. Amen. Amen. Can one of you stand and read it? Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, I'll just, okay, sister, can you read it? Thank you. Thank you, sister. God bless you. See, the psalm is talking about that my heart thirsts for you. Can your heart thirst for God? Tell me. You thirst for some coconut juice. Correct or not? What kind of language is this? 
my heart thirsts for you. But that's the kind of condition that we got to be. My heart thirsts for you. And what it says, my body longs for you. What a language. What a language. So as a worshipper, sister, where are you? Worshipper. What, does you, what do you long for in worship? You long for the drums. You long for the bass. You long for all the musical instrument. Now the psalmist is saying, my heart doesn't thirst for anything else. You know. My heart thirsts for you. See friends, that's how we want to develop hunger. Hunger is something that must be the quality of our life. Regardless you have worry, regardless you have a problem in your life, hunger is something that is so critical. Hallelujah. Hunger. No hunger, you got no, no family. Am I right? Let me just relate it back to your own life. No hunger, that means what? You don't love your wife. Or you don't love your children. What's going to happen to you? In the next 20 years, they are all just going to go far away from you. Because when you want, you are supposed to give that love, you are busy. Correct or not? When you were supposed to give that love, what did you do? You were so busy. But now your child is 21 years old. Papa, I'm busy. Papa, mommy, I'm so busy to come back for Christmas. And whose fault is that? Friends, this is serious business. Friends, we got to really have that hunger. Hunger is a vital ingredient even for your employment. A lot of people, I'm staying in a certain hotel, and then this lady is attending to, to you're supposed to be a receptionist, but she's just too busy doing other things. Sour face. What does that mean? It means that she does not have the hunger for the work that she's doing. You've got to have a hunger. That means you've got to have a passion. You've got to have so much of passion in whatever you do. If the pastor says, brother, do this. Hallelujah. Yes, tell me, pastor, what I should do. Hunger is a passion question in each one of us in every sector of our life. Amen? Hunger is not only for God. Hunger is for your for your studies, hunger. That means you don't need your father or your mother to spank you. But you say, okay, this is my responsibility. I'm studying mathematics at, at maths and I'm going to study. I'm hungry for that knowledge. Hunger is so important. You see, a lot of people, we have stopped our growth as a Christian, but others have taken a master's and a, a doctorate and they have taken that other courses. You know why? Because they are hungry for knowledge. They are hungry for their promotion. They are hungry to get a higher salary. Hunger. A lot of Christians, they do what? They are just going to sit on their bed and say, Lord, help me. Because you said, I, you know, when I pray, everything is going to be all right. Who told you that lie? So you don't have to do anything. Sit at home and you'll be, you will just get that uh, doctorate or MBBS just flying in into your house. It's a lie. Amen. So friends, don't forget the word. Tell me what is the word that I shared with you just now. H-U-N-G-E-R. Hunger. And so that's why the psalmist is saying, my heart thirsts for you. And then what happens? My body, my flesh, longs for you. Hallelujah. Friends, I pray today. Can you put your hand on your heart? I know more. Or most of us, we are so caught up with life. And that is why this message is coming to you. I'm going to pray with you today. Can you repeat this prayer after me? Dear Lord Jesus, I commit my burdens unto you. I commit all the yokes that are too heavy for me unto you. Give me that hunger for God once again. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you give thanks to God? Clap your hands and say thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so friends, um, I want to just continue to, to explain to you the whole dimension of light that I saw, the light in the cave. How many of you know Psalms 119, verse number 105? I was talking to pastor yesterday evening to, about this whole matter. That thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. 
Hallelujah. How many of you heard that word? Can you repeat it after me? Oh no, can you tell me what I said to you? Die. Can I just get the torchlight, Pastor? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, sir. Can they have the light too? All right. I'm going to show you an illustration. No magic show, right? <laughs> Thy word. This is the word. What is this pastor doing? I mean, this is craziness. But this is the word. Light. Light. Thy word is the lamp. I'm going to do this moonwalk, all right? How many of you know Michael Jackson moonwalk? All right. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Okay? So can you see? I think I will probably... Can, you can see me, right? So now, if I put this torchlight lower, can you see the radius? How large it is? Not very large, right? So if I'm going to have just light, but then I have a small radius, so I can just walk on this one part. Correct or not? Yeah, I have light. I, I have that light. But my, the radius of my light is so small. So I can just walk on, on just one step. But the Bible says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. What does that mean? How many of us have the word of God in our life? How much of word of God do you have in your life? So Sunday school children say, I have little light. This little light of mine, I'm going to make it shine. I'm going to shine, 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 shine. Okay, good. But you cannot just be like a child. Even as you progress in your life, you grow. You become mature. You need more of God's word. You go, why? Because now you need a bigger radius to walk. Are you getting me? Now, if you if you off the light, you can see that there's a big circle. Hallelujah. So thy word is a lamp unto my feet, so I can keep moving. And, and thank, thank you, brother. That's awesome. All right, see, I'll, I'll do this again. So you see, when you started, you started very little. This little light of mine, I'm going to make it shine, but that's not enough. Because that, that is just good for your child. But you're growing, right? You need more light. You are now a youth. So you take a bigger step. And now you're an adult, you've got a bigger radius, right? So friends, the more you walk and live, the word of God is going to be the... I'm not moonwalker, right? I'm going to let it shine and hallelujah, I'm going to make it in life. Can you say amen to that? Can you give God a clap offering? See, this is an illustration that if you don't move, it's not going to move. Is it correct? You are just a Christian, you are living in your house and you are just really not achieving anything is because you are just right here. But you're going to exercise your faith and say, Lord, I believe you for my healing. You're going to keep walking and walking and walking and you're going to give light to the whole church. The big radius is here. Praise God. Thank you. Hallelujah. So I pray that you, you understand the concept. You understand the concept. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I want to tell you one of my own experience. See, I was actually just entering into this certain uh, venture in my own life. I didn't know what way to go, left or right. It's a certain adventure in business, all right? As a pastor, you really didn't have the degree of commerce or economics. All right, so anyway, I started started. And I, I didn't know what to do. And a friend of mine said, he said, brother, you just have to go to the junction and look at the traffic light, whether is it right to the left, and then you make a decision. See, friends is like that. If you do not start your journey in anything that you do, <clears throat> in life, in your marriage, or in your career, in your business, as you continue to progress, you will need uh, you know, a kind of a road map, correct or not? For example, you have finished your Form 5. Any Form 5 here? Form 6, college? All right. See, you don't know what to do next. 
Because you don't know what to do next, it doesn't mean that you don't, you, you don't walk, right? You have to keep moving in your life. And when you go to a cross junction, what do you do? You've got to ask God. Lord, do I go to Bali or do I do a medicine or do I do dentistry or do I do farming? So you come to the T junction and you ask God, Lord, where do I go? Where do, go, where do I go? What do I do? So friends, it all happens in our life of faith as a believer of Jesus Christ and guided by the faith, which is the word of God, which is the torchlight that I showed you. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Are you following me? Are you following me? Is it helping you? Is it helping you? Praise the Lord. So secondly is this. The depth of the, the, the spread of the light determines the width of the span of the light. And so friends, the depth of God in your life, how much of God do you have? Are you just a baby Christian? You're already 50 years old? And, and what song do you sing? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. But you're 50 years old. you got a problem. That's the wrong song, brother. you got to sing some other songs. Because you, your depth, you don't have a depth in your life. You should sing some Hosanna songs. Hosanna! See, these days, like I used to teach uh, children guitar, you know, when I was much younger. And I can play their songs. You know, what do you call? God is good. Oh, good. Uh, Jesus loves me, this I know. If Christ in the vessel, we can smile at the stone. Now they're saying some complicated songs, some hill songs, some, uh, some battle music. I said, I'm sorry, I can't play a song. Really? So that talks about our maturity. Don't stay in the, this little light of mine. No, you can't. No way. That simply means that you have been lazy. That's all. Amen? Just admit the fact. You know why? Because we didn't read the word enough. Don't just read, you know, like a parrot. Okay, 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 done, finish. Papa, I read the word of God. You know, you tell your children, oh, did you, did you pray? Yes, papi. I've done it. No, you've got to go deeper. So ask yourself this question. If you're baffled with worries of your life, which we all are, how much word, word do you have? And that is the reason why you are, you are where you are today. No progress in your life. You don't know what to do. Why? Because you didn't listen to God's word. You don't have the depth in your life. I'm talking about me also. Alright? The more you dig down, God will speak to you. God will speak to you. You are at this level in your life. In your, in your personal life. In your career. Or in your family life. You are at this level. And you just keep praying and say, God says, okay, do this. Do that. Do this. Like a worship leader, every, every Friday, Saturday, you're praying, God, what song? Tell me, I, I need to know what songs. If you don't ask, you don't receive it. Am I right? So friends, the hunger must go deep down. Amen? So don't blame when your friends are going higher in their lives. All right? We need to work with God. Amen? Because there is victory in Jesus. Do you believe that? Can you clap your hands and give thanks to God? <laughs> Hallelujah. You know what? I had the best ride of my life yesterday evening. Mercedes E-Class. The best ride in my life. But do you know how hard this man has worked all his life? I mean, he was a beautiful ride pastor. But do you know what it takes for him to achieve where, where he is today? He's a pastor, he's a medical doctor, and he's, what else? Husband and what else? Father and grandfather and, and a missionary, a mission director. We always say, whoa, whoa, Lancy, I said this, black color, woo. See, we like to judge another person, you know. But you don't know what kind of toll that he has gone through in his life. Correct. You don't know. So friends, there is a price to pay. 
And if you are a born again believer of Jesus Christ, you know what the Bible says? The power that raised Christ from the dead is living in you. Can you say amen to that? You cannot just be riding the kanchil for the rest of your life. I mean, nothing wrong with kanchil, you know. We all started there. Right, we all did start. You know what's the kanchil, brother? Yeah, it's a beautiful car. But we just can't stay there. You got to go to something else. Amen. You cannot just be a lorry driver all your life. No, you started there. Maybe you started as a production uh, you know, operator. Yeah, no problem. You started there. But God wants you to be great. Amen? Why? Can you tell me why? Why, brothers, youths, why does God want you to be great? Any answer? Why do you need to be the head and not the tail? Hey, because Others are depending on you. Amen? Did you hear me? Others are depending on you. See, in my family, I'm the periapa. means that I'm the big uncle, big father. In Tamil, it's called big father. Periapa means that you're the uncle of the family. So I've got so many people coming behind me. If I don't progress as a pastor, if I don't have enough financial blessings, what will I do? I can't do anything. You are a father, or you are a mother, or you are a grandfather, grandmother, you are an uncle. What are you doing for those people who are coming after you? Oh, sorry, I don't have enough money to buy the toy for you. Shame on you. Whose problem is that? My problem. Amen? Hallelujah. I pray that this message is going to change our life forevermore. Amen? See, I'm talking about myself. Because if I don't progress, who's going to take care of my loved ones? So the key is in just going deeper into the Word of God. Get a blueprint from heaven. Amen. Just do what God is talking, us, talking to us to do. Amen. And this third point is very interesting. Luke chapter 11, a verse number 34 and 35. Who is going to read that word for me? Luke 11, 34 and 35. Not the pastor, of course. Luke chapter 11, 34, 35. All right, I think you're not getting it. It doesn't matter. I'm going to read it. Oh, hallelujah, sister. God bless you. I think this is one of the scriptures that I find hard to understand. The lamp of your body is your eyes. Did you hear what I said? I'm trying to understand it. I went into the commentary. The lamp of the body is your eye. What does that mean? It means that your vision is the lamp of your eyes. Okay, let me just try to I mean, explain this concept to you. When you have good eyes, then your body is full of light. I think this is very scary. The Bible says to us, Jesus says these words to us, that the lamp of your body is your eye. Friends, what does it mean? We got to have our, 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 our eyes on, the, on, on Jesus, who is the lamp of our life. So that means to say, if you don't have Jesus as your lamp, you have another boss. And what is the name of that boss? Satan is your boss. See, it's very critical. The lamp of your body is your eye. Your vision. What vision are you seeing? What vision are you seeing every day? So friends, let's be careful that our vision is just Jesus. The lamp, the light that we see is centered from Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says to us, when we have good eye, then your whole body is full of light. Hallelujah. And so friends, as I come back to what I st stated earlier, that there's a condition in your life today, for many of you, you have dim lights. Dim, very dim. And it's also a warning to many of you. 
Do not let that flame die. Are you getting me? Very little flame there. We are all bombarded, not only in Malaysia, but all over the world. We are going through a lot of economic problems. And I, I went to a good restaurant yesterday afternoon. We paid 33 ringgits for two plates of rice, Indian restaurant. Crazy. A lot of problem in this world today. Friends, we really need to live accurately. I cannot be so angry with the restaurant to say that I'm not going to preach tomorrow. Am I right? I've come all the way from KL, ended up in Sabarang Jaya, and this man is charging me 35 ringgits for this nasi and something, Indian food. I'm not going to let that hamper my spirit so that I could come and stand in front of you. Amen? So friends, let us guard how we live today. Let us be so careful because the Bible also says to us, then, this is something that is on a very high end, a, a very dangerous zone that we should never go, which is taken from the book of Amos chapter 11 and verse number 11. Amos chapter 8 and verse number 11. I don't have the page number for you. But if you have picked it up, can you read that? Amos chapter 8 and verse number 11. Oh, you have not gone to Amos in your, in your life, huh? <laughs> it's just in the Old Testament. You can go to the index, huh? You know, in the Bible, right? They've got index, index page. You can just see what page number, right? For those of you, you have not visited Joel, Hag, Haggai, and you can just go to that. Okay, can you please? Go ahead, sister. Did you hear the, the, the reading of God's word? Or were you kind of like thinking of something else? I think many of you, many of them didn't hear, sister. Can you read that again? Can you please listen to the reading of God's word? Thank you. Can you tell me what Femina is the, uh, you know, the author of Amos is talking about? Famine of what again? The last row? Famine of what? Famine of the word of God. Now you have a Bible app, you got your iPhone, Samsung, whatever phone. You just click in and you download the Bible app, it's all here. You or you are the, the, the reading type, you go to the bookshop, you get all your Bible, NIV, NKJV. You know what's NIV, Pastor? What is it? No, it's New Indian version. Hallelujah. Indians all say amen. Eh? <laughs> See, now you go everywhere. You can get the word of God. Hard copy, soft copy. You want PDF also, no problem. But there comes a time there's going to be a famine of the word of God. What does that mean? When you had the opportunity, you didn't read the word of God. You refused to go for the prayer meeting. Ended up in the hospital. And what happens? You don't have your tablet with you. Or you don't have the data. This is serious. Let us guard ourselves. Let us not go to the place where we have the famine of the word of God in our life. That is a dangerous place to go. Amen. Dangerous. The pastor is preaching, you are sleeping. Or you are looking at something else which is an Insta. Instagram, TikTok, some of you? Okay, all right. Please don't be callous. Because when the word is given to you, you are not careful. And then the alongs are after you. Because of life's challenges, you make some wrong decision. And then the word of God is just no longer in your heart anymore. And I'm, we are helping a family, talking to them. They are in this, this along problem for, I don't know, 15 years? 15 years. Every month they're paying about 15,000 in terms of the interest. Vati. 
What happens? So friends, do not play the fool. I'm sorry for my language. Don't take it for granted. If the church is organizing a Zoom pray meeting, what do you got to do? Oh, no, I have got badminton. Same time. When the, the, the church says, Oh, friend, our church members, we're all gathering on Saturday night for prayer. Oh, I have bakute with my office mates. Prioritize your life. Can you say amen to that? Are we going to change our life? I've come all the way to talk to you and share this message with you. Amen. No expectation. The fire is dim. Hallelujah. Fire is dim. In no time it's going to be gone. It's not the pastor's responsibility. The Holy Spirit is talking to you today. Can, can you say amen? Is the Lord speaking to you today? How many of you God is speaking to you today? God is putting a kind of a, a kind of a stirring in your heart. Oh yeah, okay. Then you're saying, okay Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start reading the word of God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read more of God's word. I'm going to get up in the morning. I'm going to go for the prayer meeting. Or I'm going to go for the live group. Make a commitment. Can you do that? How many of you are saying, yes, I'm going to do that? I want to see your hands. How many of you are going to make a commitment? Thank you, sister. May God bless you, each one of you. You know why? Because we are the reason for the rising and the falling of many behind us. Serious. If we don't rise, what happens? Your children will not rise. How sad is that? Am I telling you the truth? If you don't rise as a classroom uh, leader, ketua darja or ketua class, what happens? You don't give enough uh, homework to your fellow members, fellow, fellow classmates. See, friends, we got to rise. You see, I tell you, in closing, the light that God has given, as in, in conclusion, this light. Oh, I think I'll, I'll just show you another illustration. what? We are called to be? What do we do? Where do we shine? Tell me, where do we shine? Inside the basket. Can you see the light? Oh, you guys are doing super work, you know? Oh, you can still see the dark, I mean the light. Huh? We are shining inside. Correct or not? But what Jesus said, Put your light, thank you darling, put your light on the stand. For whom to see? Tell me. For whom to see? I can't hear you. For whom? The world. Ah. So who, who is the world that you're talking about? Darkness. Ah. Kingdom. Motorcycle, uh, what is it? The Honda, Kapchai. For so many years. Kapchai, you know, right? I, I, I live a long time in my life on that cup, Honda, Honda Cup. And then I migrated. So they begin to ask, why is this person able to buy a car, uh, buy a Honda, or buy a Mazda, or whatever it is? See, they're going to look at you. Friends, I want to let you know, people are watching you. Whether you realize it or not, brother, sister, people are watching you because you are a... What is it? You are a Christian, you are a child of God. So they are secretly watching you, you know. Well, how come you can buy iPhone 12? Wow, who is this man? They, say, hey. they will study your background. They will study the way you talk. They will study the way you stand. You can't show all the different fingers. You can't, you can't say the F, I mean, the four letter words. You can't do that. Because why? You are a Christian. So friends, in conclusion, I pray that we are going to really hunger for God. Amen? That flame, don't let it die. Hallelujah. Well, how do you do that? Get into the word of God. Amen? Hunger. Like there is no tomorrow. Hunger. You know what the psalmist says? My flesh longs for the word of God. 
Amen. Amen. Let's stand up together. We are going to pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Can I get the musicians if you can come? It will be great. <clears throat> we'll sing that song, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hallelujah. Father, we love you, Lord. You can speak in the spirit. Come on, Tara. Lord, we just need the hunger today. Would you replenish our hunger? Oh Lord, we cry out to you today. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna. Lord, we need you, Lord. Replenish our hunger today, Father. Oh, I pray for each and everyone. Can you lift up your hands to heaven? Can you just call out to God today? Say, Lord, help me. I need you. I need you all in my life. I need you. Lord, I've gone away from you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We worship you, Father. We need you, Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna. We love you. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, we need the fire of God. Hosanna, Hosanna in the fire. Shikabanda laba, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the fire. The next was. Coming on the clouds with fire, yes, Lord. the whole earth shakes. The whole earth shakes. I would encourage you to take this time to worship Him, Amen. I see. I want you to participate in that worship today. Hallelujah. Washing over all I see, the people see. The people see. The people see. Lifting up to heaven. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the prayer today open up my eyes to the things open up my eyes to the things unseen Lord show me how to love like you have loved me break my heart touch my life today along break my heart for what breaks your everything everything I am for your kingdom as I walk from earth into eternity Heal my heart Break my heart and break Heal my heart and make it clear Heal my heart I pray Father 
Open up my eyes to the things I see. Show me how to love like you have loved me. Break my heart. Just have the keyboard to play that song. Heal my heart and make it clear. Let this be your prayer today, this morning. Open up my eyes. I pray there'll be an opening of the eyes. Jesus' name this day. To see the love of God in my life. Show me, oh Father, your faithfulness. Help us to feel your heart today. Your heart is what we need today, Father. Your heart is what we need for your kingdom, Lord. Jesus. As I walk from earth into eternity. I pray that you're going to use this song. This is a very precious time in the moment. So precious, so important. Amen. The lyric says, Break my heart for what breaks yours. Can you say that prayer even? What concerns God today? What is it that God is concerned about in your life? Is it your parents' welfare? Is it your siblings' welfare? What concerns God in your life? Let me tell you, friends, God is not only interested in church, the things in the kingdom of God, but God is interested in you. God is interested in your, your income. God is interested in your family. God is interested in your dependence. Hallelujah. I don't want you to be deceived to think that Christianity is all about coming to church. But church is the place that everything births. Hallelujah. Can you say amen with me? Amen. It is from the house of God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You must come to church. You must receive the, the seed that God is going to give to you. Amen. But to be a blessing in your own environment. Can you say amen to that? Amen. amen. If you have not given provision to your parents, I urge you today. Or maybe you have not visited your parents or your your loved ones for so long. It's time. Or maybe someone in your family has hurt you. Maybe your uncle, your auntie, or your cousin. Somebody has hurt you. Because that matters to God. Amen. That matters to God. That person had said something to you 10 years ago. You're keeping it in your heart. But God wants you to reconcile with that person. Amen. Because God is interested in you. Hallelujah. It's not just about church. But church is the foundation. Hallelujah. For your work. How many of you can say amen to that? Amen. God is interested that you prosper. Hallelujah. This is not prosperity gospel. No. God wants you to become prosperous and blessed. But it's not just for you. Hallelujah. Amen. God is interested in everything that concerns you. If you are sick or if your loved ones, they are sick. God is concerned for them. Amen. So I want you to think about one person who has hurt you today. That one person. And you're keeping that hurt in your life for so long. And that is the reason why you cannot get the hunger for God. Friends, I pray you won't be distracted this morning. Who is that one person in your life? Hammered you when you were young said some bad things. I want you to remember this is important. I want you to release that person to God today. Amen. That bitterness that you've had. You said all kinds of things about that person and that has hurt the heart of the God the Father. Amen. And today God wants to release you. Are you ready to release that person? Are you ready to let go 
unless you let it go that bitterness is going to kill you it's going to suffocate the life of god in you that's not what god want you to be if you are ready can you lift up to your hands to heaven no don't just lift up your hands because others are lifting your hands to heaven but you are lifting up your hands to say lord i forgive that brother i forgive my uncle or i forgive that cousin who did this to me or i commit my my boss my former boss who did this to me or my employee or my colleagues i'm going to help you to pray this prayer this prayer dear lord jesus I come before you in repentance Lord. Help me Father. I was so hurt Father. I had so much of anger towards that person. I couldn't help myself Lord. But today I release that person unto you Father. That person into your loving hands Father. Are you praying this prayer with me? I commit that I release that burden unto you Father. Forgive me for all my bitterness, Lord. You're praying this prayer with me t- this morning. Forgive me for all my hurts. Say that with me, right? Forgive me for all my hurts. Release it unto you. In Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give God a great clap offering. I know. I know that mighty things are going to happen in your life. Amen. You know why? Because the Bible says the anointing will break the yoke and you say with me the anointing the anointing, the anointing breaks, the yoke. breaks the yoke hallelujah the kabasha kabara let's lift our hands together again to heaven we're going to speak in tongues a few moment risha kabarando kobo don't be shy don't be timid amen just for a few moments in kalama rondo bo kaba shekere lord release every burden from the lives of the people today every seed of god every thorn in their lives so father release them from every burden so god every bitterness anger frustration in their lives in the mighty name of jesus you set them free today oh god release them from their past release them oh god from all their hurts so father set them free set them free god so kabana te shikhi we love you father thank you lord Father as we conclude this morning's ministration thank you so much oh god we pray for this congregation father how was revival church oh god i pray oh god they will grow in measure amen bounce and leaps and bounds i pray by the name of jesus i pray many ones will will start driving bigger cars father o rakabo shandaraba many people will start getting promotions in this house father Amen. and let them give it back to you father god Amen. let them be a light unto the world thank you jesus in jesus name we pray amen god bless you please be seated hallelujah thank you lord hallelujah